Blackjack, the most common casino game. A game of luck and math, and one you will probably lose most of the time. However, computers are very good at math, so can we leverage their strength to make a program that's absurdly good at winning blackjack? The goal of blackjack is to get a higher hand value than the dealer, but if anyone goes over 21, they lose. It's always a tough decision to decide if you take another card and risk losing the game instantly or not, and risk losing to the dealer. Let's eliminate the decision altogether by having a computer calculate the best move. I'm going to start by defining cards, decks, and hands within the C++ program. I'll define what valid cards are and what the value of each card is within the game. I'll also create a function to calculate the value of a hand since it's very important we do that correctly. Next, I'm going to have the program deal a player and dealer some cards, and ask the player what they want to do next. Now, we need to computationally figure out what the best move is. Lucky for us, some pretty smart people have already figured out the best action to take in every scenario. This lookup table tells you when you should hit, stand, split, or double down, given what you currently have. Many people don't know this, but you're actually allowed to bring paper cheat sheets to the blackjack table. You just can't use electronic devices. So let's convert this to code. When it's the player's turn, I'll simply pass in the player's cards and the dealer's showing card to this lookup table. Then it will return the action the player should take. So great, now we have this lookup table, and we can win lots of money. I'm going to write a simulation on thousands of hands to see how this performs. Uh, unfortunately, even with this strategy, we only win 49.5% of the time. If you play enough games with this strategy, we're going to lose all our money. This is the reason why Blackjack is so popular in casinos. It gives you a decent chance of winning money at the start, uh, but across many games, the house always wins. However, you may have heard of an even better strategy, which is so good that it's banned in every casino. Card counting. 
Most people can't memorize every single card that they come across, so most card counters simply keep a count of the number of high-value cards versus low-value cards. They do this because the high-value cards favor the player more, and the low-value cards favor the dealer more. So if you know there are more high-value cards in the deck, you should bet more. Typically, the 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace are all assigned a value of negative 1, and the cards 2 through 6 are assigned a value of 1. You keep track of the number in your head starting at 0, and then add or subtract 1 based on all the cards that you see in play. If you want to determine how well the deck favors you, you simply divide this number by the number of decks in play. If the resulting number is 3 or higher, then playing with the optimal strategy coupled with the higher cards in the deck gives you an edge over the house. When we run this over simulations, you can see that we are doing just barely better than the house. Note that the win rate is still lower than the loss rate, but since we are betting more on the winning hands, we are coming out on top. Now we are writing an AI to play with the optimal strategy, and computers are much better at keeping track of numbers than us. So we can keep track of each card type individually to give us better odds. In this new system, we will give 4s and 5s a slightly higher weight than the other low cards since they are more helpful to the dealer. We will give the Ace a slightly higher weight as well since it isn't as helpful as the 10 value cards. With these additions, let's see how well the AI does. It seems our addition actually made it worse for us. The reason for this is our weights are now unbalanced. If you add up the pluses and minuses, they don't equate to the same numbers. Our AI is no longer properly analyzing when we are doing good or bad. So all we need to do is scale them so the pluses add up to 5 and the minuses add up to negative 5. When we redo the simulation, we are now confidently winning consistently. Now, to do even better than this, we will need to be more aggressive with our betting. This next optimization will greatly improve how much money we are winning, but it will quickly get you kicked out of a real casino. Instead of a simple if statement to set our bet size, we are going to use an exponential function with a bet cap. This is better because every additional point in our count greatly improves our odds of winning. We also know that a low count reduces our odds of winning, so we could simulate stepping away from the table when our count gets low and not betting at all. This new betting strategy is actually so good, it broke my win probability calculator. This probability here should be between 0 and 1, but now it's much higher. What's more useful now is our average money gain, which is now at about $100 profit per game. And keep in mind, our minimum bet is $1. This is an insane amount of money, but I do have one more improvement to get a bit more out of the AI. The final improvement I am going to do to make this the best AI it can be is to modify its in-game decision making based on the count. When the count is high, we have a higher chance of drawing a 10 value card. Therefore, we should hit and double more often when the count is high, and stand more often when the count is low. With these additions, the AI is now making about $120 per game instead of $100. Hope you enjoyed this video and can find a great use for this overpowered blackjack AI. Uh, I think I'm going to do a poker AI soon, so stay on the lookout for that one. Thanks for sticking around in the end, and I'll see you next time.